Lumafade transitions that popular editors just like Sam Calder use all the time are super simple to recreate. This is the Lumafade transition that we're creating today. And you can make it as short as you want or as long as you want. And it doesn't matter, it just plays back perfectly. So as you can see, we're keying out like the dark parts of the waves first. And then we slowly keying out the bright parts to the end. So the first step is go to your effects library in the top left corner, then select video transition and then scroll down just a little bit until you see fusion transitions and then just use the fusion cross this off. So click the fusion cross this off, drag it in between your clips and then right click on that transition, open in fusion page, which will then open up this transition in the fusion page. First of all, let me make this a single viewer because for this composition, we don't need a dual viewer. Then I'm gonna make more space. Then I'm gonna right click on my cross dissolve and hit ungroup. Then I'm gonna right click in the free space, go to arrange tools to grid. First things first is we need another dissolve node. So hit shift spacebar and type in dissolve and just click add. So on this dissolve two node, we're actually creating our hard switch. So this is what we're gonna do right now. Either you're gonna click on the dissolve two node, right click and go to edit controls, or you select the dissolve two node, go to your inspector in the top right corner, and where you see dissolve two, just right click there, go to edit controls. Now this will bring up this new window called edit controls. And first of all, we're gonna give this a name and we're gonna call this bright slash dark and then type number is fine. And then under page, you can leave it on user. But when you leave it on user, the Venture Resolve will create a new page right in your inspector where it says controls, settings, and then there will be another page called user. And that's not what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna set my hard switch to the controls page. And then under input control, we wanna make this a checkbox. If you selected all of that, just hit OK. And now you can see we have a hard switch called bright and dark. But if I'm going to check that you see nothing happens. And that is because we haven't attached anything to that switch yet. So basically, the Venture Resolve doesn't know what to do when we check this box. So then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to right click on background and foreground, go to expression, and then use this pick width and point it at the bright dark slider, just like so, and then hit enter. And now if I'm gonna check this box, you can see that jumping onto one. And if I uncheck that, you can see this jumping onto zero. So then click on the free space to have no nodes selected, hit shift spacebar and type in bitmap and then add the bitmap node. Now connect the output of this of one into the yellow input of bitmap and then select the bitmap node, go to the inspector and change the channel from alpha to luminance. Then what we wanna do is go to media in one, grab the output and connect it into the yellow input of the dissolve two node, and then go to media in two, grab the output and connect it into the green input of the dissolve two node. So you have something like this. Right now, we still don't have a luma fade, we still have just a regular dissolve. And that's where we have to make some changes on the dissolve one node. So click on the dissolve one node, go to your inspector in the top right corner, go to operation and set the operation mode from dissolve to gradient wipe. And then we still have to connect our bitmap one into this whole pipeline. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to grab my output of bitmap one and connect it into my dissolve one, but not just into the dissolve one, we have to use the pink input. So just like so, and if I'm gonna play this back right now, you can see that it actually works as a luma fade. But that's pretty linear, so we're gonna make some changes that this looks a whole lot more pleasing. And then what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna select this off one, I'm gonna go to my inspector, and then I'm gonna select this modifiers tab. So this will bring us to the atom curves modifier on this off one background. Now, first of all, we have to change our curve shape from curve linear to easing, if you want so, or to custom. That's totally up to you, whatever you like. So for this transition, actually, let's go with easing, then select the in and out easing, let's just use exponential and exponential, and then you're pretty much done. Then we have to create two more pipe routers to make everything look a little more clean. 
In order to do that, just hit Option or Alt if you're on a Windows PC. Hover over the outputs of Media and One until they both change color and then left click to create a pipe router. And then do the exact same thing with Media and Two. Just hover over them, hold Option or Alt and then left click to create this new pipe router. Then what we want to do is hold Command or Control again if you're on a Windows PC. Select the first pipe router from Media and One then select the second one and then let go of the command key. So we have both of those pipe routers selected, then hold shift and left click and drag a box over the rest of them. And then once we have done that, we should have everything highlighted except the media in one, two and media out one. Then right click on any of those nodes, go to macro, create macro and call this LumaFade. For this example, I'm just gonna call this LumaFade1 because I already have a LumaFade installed. Then what you wanna do is go to Dissolve2 because Dissolve2 again is the node where we have the hard switch. And of course we wanna have the hard switch accessible from the edit page. So we're gonna select bright and dark hard switch. Then we're gonna go over to the NM curves. If you want the NM curves included to adjust from the edit page, just select the NM curves one and then select source input curve in and out, out, look up, and then scroll down till you see NM curves look up and then open that and select value. Then just hit close and DaVinci Resolve will ask you to save changes to macro tool one where you want to select yes and then this new window comes up and just determine the position where you want this to save to. I always recommend to save this to your desktop at first. So let's just save this to my desktop right now and then hit save. I can now go back to my edit page, delete this cross dissolve because we don't need that. We already have the transition created. So just delete that, tap out of DaVinci Resolve. So then I'm gonna go to my hard drive, which is this Macintosh right here, double click on that then go to Library, Application Support, Blackmagic Design, DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, Templates, Edit, Transitions. And then in here, you can create any folder that you like. Just create a new folder with your name, whatever, or just as I have here with my name. And this is the space where you want to drag and drop your just previously created macro. So just drag that in here. Now you see we have LumaFade and LumaFade1. Now we can close this, open Resolve back up. And now I'm back in that project. As you can see, there's no transition in here whatsoever. Then I can go to Video Transitions, select the folder that you just created, and then there you have your LumaFade setting. Just click and drag, make it longer or shorter, depending how you like it. And voila, you've just created your own LumaFade transition that you can use from now on in every project. And the good thing is, as I've already mentioned, select the LumaFade transition, go to your inspector in the top right corner if that's not already open. And there you have your LumaFade, you have the bright and dark switch. Then you have your source transition. Of course, you can create a custom curve now if you want to. And now you have your own LumaFade transition that you can just slap in between cuts and it will make everything look super clean. Now that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If so, please consider leaving a like and a comment. That would mean a ton to me. But anyways, hope you're having a great day. See you next week. Bye.